So, um, kind of wanted to continue from where I left off yesterday and talk a little bit about life and business growth. All right. And Okay, so next slide. Is it working? No. <laughs> <laughs> He's calling it out. You have to press the, the side buttons. I did. You did? Yeah, it's not working really good for some reason, so I found if you go like, uh, like, like that. You do what? Yeah, exactly. Oh. You have to do a little dancing show. The basketball. <laughs> oh, I love that picture. Did you try clicking it now? Take a picture of him. <laughs> yeah. Get the camera out of your way. The other way. There you go. That's a good so, look. It begins with a vision. <laughs> <laughs> and the vision begins uh, about a story about a guy raking hay. Really Is that good. actually you? That's not me, but that's exactly the kind yeah. of tractor I was on. Wow. So, um, the bean choices, I'm going to call them bean choices, that I made in that hay field where I travel the world to give a kid a second chance. And then secondarily, own a farm, be my own boss, uh, really be a business owner. That's what that involves me to. Um, space is cool. I grew up in the space age, you know, with uh, men going to the moon and was fascinated by space. Uh, I love flying planes, even though I hadn't at that point. Um, and I had a really cool mentor of mine. His name is Dr. Robert Layton, who was a civil engineering professor at Oregon State, now retired. Um, when Mount St. Helens blew, he actually had the opportunity to do studies at Mount St. Helens, up in the mountains, watching all of the uh, logging trucks coming in and out. I thought, that's an awesome job, really. <laughs> what devastation that was. Um, but the reality is that even in our businesses, our businesses begin with a vision. And so that vision on that hay field didn't change for me throughout my life. Those were the choices that I made. And I didn't know how it was going to happen, but I knew that those were the elements that was going to create my life for myself. And so, you know, at Data Dynamics, our vision is to become the premier digital marketing partner for the world's global media and advertising providers. And we put together a word cloud that really characterized who we were and what we were um, intending to be. And, um, and we went through a couple day branding session and um, we'd never done that before as a company and uh, realized that to be a great company, you have to be something first and describe that before you do so you can have. And so, being choices come from be, do, and have, mm -hmm. rather than do, be, have, or do, have, be. So, it really is about who you are and who your company is to really generate your growth. And that's my philosophy. Not only my philosophy, but it's what has evolved in my life. So, then it starts with a vision and it builds momentum uh, with a mission. It's really your why. And I think other people have talked about the why. And I just described one of my whys, which is, um, I think it's really the most important question that you can answer. And um, uh, my why around my children was that there were all these older kids that were out in the world, you know, living in foster homes or in orphanages that didn't have a chance. And I've learned a statistic later on in life that 85% of the kids who don't get adopted in Colorado, by the time they're 18, are either in jail or dead. Wow. And it's a large percentage? number of kids, 85%. 85 it's a very large number. And so, you know, when you look at adopting kids and giving kids a second chance, that really was my mission. Do I keep, was it crazy at times? <laughs> Natural kids are crazy at times. Step kids are crazy at times. Adopted kids are no different. They're crazy at times. Um, I'm proud to say that um, they're both still alive. I didn't kill them. 
And um, <laughs> there were times when um, when I was uh, thinking that uh, that I might. There's something going on with the <laughs> so um, being choices, um, setting your vision, and then actually setting your why is incredibly important. And that comes into your mission statement. And so in business, our why is our mission. Mm -hmm. it's, it's how do we go to business, it's who is our market, what is our uh, call to serve. And, um, and that mission is incredibly important to communicate across the entire team. And so um, we'd already grown and decayed and grown again to three million in revenue. And um, we never had a business mission. It was never written for our employees. It, it really was amazing to me, but what was amazing to me was the success, which was based really around being on it. That was the one thing that everyone could talk about at Data Dynamics was we're on it. On it? On it. When our clients call, we're on it. Oh, I got you. Okay. Oh, neat. We deliver it. We're on it. And so we actually, I'll go in a little bit more. They're, they're going to fix it for you. Just give it okay. 10 seconds. They went to the wrong okay. slide here. Okay. Are you going more forward? Yeah. They're going to do it real quick for you so you don't go crazy. Okay. Builds momentum with their mission. And, um, and then for me, why grow a business? is, um, you know, for me, my why is to be a great father. That's why I show up every day for work. Or I show up every day for my customers. Or I show up every day for anybody that needs our, our services. To be a great teacher, I, I think having JD in the room is kind of unique. Because even as a young 20-something year old, my team, we, we brought people in and we taught them. That was our was our goal. We actually, he says we threw them in. Well, sometimes it's throw them into the fire, but they were always set up with a mentor. We had weekly meetings. We had actually those training sessions with each one of those, um, uh, with everybody on the team. To help people what they want be what they want to be is another one of my reasons for wanting to grow a business. To travel the world and be a world citizen. Um, I don't consider myself an American anymore. After 10 years overseas, I really do. I love talking to people from multiple cultures and from multiple um, uh, yes. countries around the world. And I relate most with those who've actually moved around the world themselves. <coughs> if you've lived in France or you've lived in, mm -hmm. in Germany or you've lived in France, I, I find incredible connection with people who've experienced that mm -hmm. outside of the US. And to build a foundation to help as many people as possible. I mean, that's my ultimate goal, and um, my wife and I have started that. Our company mission statement talks about outstanding customer service, being on it for our customers. Talks about um, improving quality, delivery, price, satisfaction, and success. And so, this now is understood by every employee, and as a result, that's helped us grow. Um, a word chart, but this is incredibly important. So what we are now doing, when we talk about hiring mm -hmm. and giving appraisals and assessing people, is assessing to our core values. And it was a lesson I learned recently. Um, but so our core values are we're focused on excellent customer service. Our team is motivated, committed, to feel ownership and reliable. We pride ourselves on excellence and results we provide. We're ethical and trustworthy in our business dealings and we care about our employees. Care about our employees comes from our founder, who um, with the money that this business provides takes care of so many people in, in his life. Not even necessarily through charity, but through you know buying grandparents houses who've never had that opportunity to even own a home. And um, you know, buying his mother a, a nice car and, you know, shipping it off to her just before she passed away. So she had that in, you know, the last few days of her, a um, few months of her life. Um, he's taking good, great care of all of his employees and it, it pervades our, our culture. We aspire to have collaboration, give recognition, to leave our customers with a learning experience, to have balance in work and life, 
to be futuristic and be future oriented and figure out what's next. To have fun, to have passion for what we do, to um, everyone be a salesperson. So everyone in the company mm -hmm. has got this mindset around they're there to sell to the customer and to give the customer what they're asking for. Um, we're digital marketing experts. We uh, strive to be flexible and problem solvers. And so what we do is we take this and we put it in a matrix. And I can show you. I even, we even rate me on all of those. And we rate it as plus, minus, or plus, minus. And um, yes, I have some plus minuses. And um, they're customer service, believe it or not. And I own that, and I wear that. I'm improving in that every day. What does it mean by plus, minus? So a plus is they're always, you know, always on it, always um, flexible, always um, collaborative, always balanced. A minus is needs improvement. And a plus minus is not consistent. Okay? And so that's how we're rating all of our employees now. And we're having an open dialogue. It's actually a, it's really transparent leadership. We do a 360 review and we review hire and fire against our core values. It takes shape through a plan. And the fundamentals are core values, your core focus, your 10-year target, your three-year picture, your marketing strategy, your one-year plan, next quarter's objectives, um, any issues to resolve in a talent plan. And um, um, I don't get to claim those, okay? This is really um, the, the full list. I've always had pieces of this list, but the full list comes from out of traction. I'm just you know, going to be fully honest with you guys, I'm describing what we've done in data dynamics that um, is an evolution beyond really where we were. When did you start doing the traction in the EOS now? Uh, a year and a half ago. Key factors of business growth is understanding the S-curve and invention and reinvention, having a vision and focus, the investment in financing, um, market analysis was incredibly important. So, um, this is where, so I have this nickname, Honey Badger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is that your, so is that your wife? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> does honey anyone know the story of the Honey Badger? Honey Badger doesn't care. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so, you can all look up the Honey Badger. <laughs> um, <laughs> It came from me being home for four months when um, we sold SRA to Providence Equity, and, and I was on as a, the highest paid uh, tractor driver on the planet for four months while we were in transition in the company. <laughs> and so I spent a lot of time at, a, at my house working on projects. And um, I first week I was home, I started five different projects, a new gate, a pool, a, Barn, you know, <laughs> vineyard, and my wife went, "Oh my God, <laughs> you're no, there's no way you're." And she started arguing with me over, "You're never going to finish those. You're never going to finish those. You're never going to finish those." And I said, "Watch me, watch me, watch me." <laughs> it's like I don't want to have this conversation anymore. I got work to do. <laughs> so I'd get up every morning, like four o'clock, and go out and do something. And in those four months, I got all that work done. And she just called me from that point, Honey Badger, because I just tear it up, mm -hmm. right? Get it done, feed everybody. And uh, so, yeah, I've got the nickname Honey Badger. Mm -hmm. Well, so market analysis, my Honey Badger came out. So I asked my sales team, give me the top 50 markets we don't have. Give me the top 50 media groups that we need to capture in that. One month later, I'm still sitting around waiting for it. Now, as a leader, you have a choice of, of find someone new, of show them how to do it, and I'm the kind of guy who actually says, okay, I'm gonna show you how to do it. Up till three o'clock in the morning in Baltimore, mm -hmm. off on Wikipedia, put together a document that went through and captured all 50 media groups, figured out which cities they were in across this country, and handed them our targets. You know, we're going after these five groups in these, you know, 20 markets this year. And, you know, they're going to add and then put together a pipeline. And since then, they're like, oh, 
That's what you were asking for. <laughs> and so, you know, sometimes I think, you know, we hire people, we have people who are good in one thing, but, you know, when you come from different experience. backgrounds and experiences, it's hard to describe that. So I've always worked to a pipeline, you know, of, of orders and, you know, where are the, you know, the best projects and programs. And so I think in having that market projection and then that pipeline of, and a plan for how your sales team is going to attack it is incredibly important. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have that rigor around a sales team, it won't do you any justice. It saved us. So, um, let's see. You have to have talent acquisition and retention, and I struggle with that every day, and I'm honest with it. Um, systems, we've got amazing systems now. Um, we have a system that's called Orderly that brought orderly order out of the chaos of our order system. Everyone has access to everything in the company. We know who's working what. Any person can change roles and see cues and, and um, workflow from, from any other staff member. Uh, and revenue sharing power partners. So one of the reasons I think we are so successful is our business model. We have a retail business model, a wholesale business model, and, um, uh, and a special partners business model. And so our retail, oh, I missed our agency, retail, agency, wholesale, um, and so we've got different pricing structures. And many places would just, their heads would spin when you start thinking about invoicing when you're doing 2,000 orders a month. So our systems actually built in all of our pricing tables. So everything comes out of our system for each and every customer, depending on the size of order and, and what pricing they're on. But our power partners get a wholesale price. And wholesaling is incredibly important. When you go to a media group that has 100 media outlets, and they have 1,200 sales force, and you can go in and train that sales force, that is an incredibly powerful model. Mm -hmm. And so there are other ways to get power partners. Mark is excellent at strategic partnering. We've got a little bit of a different model, but strategic partners can be the difference between you 2xing your business and doing the same thing, trying to do it again, and 10xing your business, completely changing the, changing your business around. So, um, you know, finding ways to do revenue sharing with different companies. And what I look for in power partners, and if you listen to the MSNBC interview, which, by the way, I have to admit, was the first time my mom and dad, who are very <laughs> strong Fox News supporters, <laughs> watched MSNBC. <laughs> I think it was, oh. Do I, do I have you? We have to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> it was of you, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, right. So, um... Sweet. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> My dad. Yeah. So, we, we talked about in that interview the fact that, you know, power partners are partners who share your current customer base. Mm -hmm. Okay, your type of customer. Not your, I'm sorry. They share your type of customer but not directly your customer base. And they're not a competitor, okay? So, um, you know, for instance, we have um, some agency partners that we work with that deal with, you know, auto dealers across the country. They have relationships in the media groups for other reasons. We ride in with them, we give them a revenue share, and, um, you know, it, everybody, benefits from that. It's a third party endorsement. There is no more powerful right. marketing strategy on the planet than a third party endorsement. Mm -hmm. So you have to have all of that, but really when it comes down to it, innovation and then marketing, right? So how do you go to market? Having the power partners is incredibly important. So another eye chart, but this is basically our, our plan on two pages for the next 10 years. And it is boiled down into the key components that will allow us to grow. Our current core values, our core focus to be the leading digital marketing solutions partner, our niche is media and advertising, our three-year target is 25 million in revenue and 25 employees. Now, 25 employees is going to be a challenge. Our target market 
top 50 cities, digital sales managers and VPs of digital who want, to additional, who want additional revenue and to expand the product offerings. Our three uniques, our Disney level customer service, that came from our team. They said we are Disney level customer service. Mm -hmm. no, nice. We are on it. Our technology is, is our second unique. We have an order management, our analytics and the dashboard. Not other email and digital providers do that. And we have sales, media sales training and support. So we go into the field. I got a guy that goes out and he brought, <laughs> when we go to the field and we're doing a sales training, we always hear objections. Well, you'd never be able to sell to, and Rob says, who's the toughest auto guy that you go out and sell to? And they'll say, well, that's Charlie. Okay, let's get in the car. Let's go talk to Charlie. And Rob will go out and he'll close Charlie on campaigns. And from there, it's like, and he picks the right person in the group. I love it. So oh, it actually okay. becomes the, it's incredibly powerful how that, it goes back to what I did on the market analysis. Mm -hmm. When you get the objection that many times, sometimes you just got to show people how it's done and mm -hmm. show them how to do it so that they get the confidence that we can do it, we can understand it, and they work through it. We have a proven process, we have a guarantee. Our three-year picture is on the right, including what it looks like and what we've got to accomplish. Our one-year plan, the core elements of that, our rocks, which are quarterly um, big things we've got to accomplish, and, um, and our issue list that we're working through uh, and uh, that are assigned to individual teams. So going through a strategic planning, you know, is incredibly important to actually have a process to go through and to, to figure that out. It doesn't matter to me what size your business is. Mm -hmm. You know, if, it's, if you're a one person person business, mm -hmm. go out on, you know, January 2nd, find a hotel, go to the top floor of the hotel, overlook in the city, and sit down with a piece of paper and write down what your plan is for one year, three year, five years. Mm -hmm. It's incredibly mm -hmm. powerful how when you put that on paper, yep. it actually manifests itself. And faster. Mm -hmm. um, and so those are the things. One other thing, pricing. I really think everybody, <laughs> underprices most everything in the world because there's incredible value in what we deliver. And so um, I hear it all the time, new business owners coming in and say, you know, well, I don't know what I'm worth, you know, $50 an hour, will you pay me 35? I, I, you hear it all the time, people are, you know, um, rather than explaining what their value is, they, you know, they apologize for their pricing. And, um, and I'll tell you where this came from, right? We have a model that's pretty amazing. I think I described it yesterday. Brent was thinking, well, maybe I can do 20 of these a month, right? And he figured out, okay, this is what I need to be able to live. And so he set his margin based on that, and he did the market analysis. And he set it, you know, at a wholesale rate so he could sell through people. And it just took off. I really think that... Doing that pricing analysis is incredibly important. Looking at what products have margin. So many people work on products that have no margin because it's been commoditized and everyone's already in that space. Find the niche and charge a premium and work on your niche and be the first to market. That's really incredibly important. You can feed an elephant peanuts or hay bales. So, you know, an elephant's going to die if you try to feed it peanuts. You really need hay bills. So as you grow, you've got to find bigger products. You've got to find, you know, higher value products to bring to your best customers. And so, I'm um, eating my own words here, that's exactly what we're doing. We typically have a $1,200 product. We're pushing for a $5,000 product and going into our best customers and figuring out how to get that into the auto dealers. And so, in helping Data Dynamics grow, I put together, you know, early on a 30-point strategy assessment 
a hundred point systems assessment, and that's because I'm an ops guy. Um, staffing assessment, service, and um, and an S curves because you know that was one thing that I had brought up with um, with our founder is that Brent, you know, here's the way that, and I didn't know it was an S curve at the time, but here's the way every industry goes, right? Everything follows an S. Some at some point it tops out, and the question is where does it top out? And so figuring out where the knee and the top of the curve is so that you know when you've got to reinvent yourself is incredibly important if you're going to be in business for a long time. It's also incredibly important to know if you're going to sell your business where you are in that curve. Um, you want to ride the growth. You want to get out about, you know, at the 75% point, I think, and you just never know unless you're actually evolving like we are. We're not looking to get out. We're adding, you know, more products. We're adding acquisitions. Um, but for some people, you know, they're looking to build a business and sell it. And I think we're going to find a bunch of, you know, ink folks who are on that um, on that track. Kevin, one other, wait, yeah. Can you say more about the assessments? Are those like your in-house proprietary assessments, or do you have? I'm going to call them proprietary. Yeah, okay. but. Um, I'll be honest with you, at this point it's an assessment that I've done with three different businesses that seem to actually give incredible results, right, in terms of, in, if I look at the things that I told Brent to watch for mm -hmm. three years ago that we actually worked our way around, I've got great statistics on predicting <laughs> future. That customer that dropped 50%, that was my first warning to him. We've got one customer. We need to look at you know managing that risk and add other groups in adjacent markets just in case something happens to them. Mm -hmm. Now it turns out that we've actually we've gone to bat, and they're one of our special customers that we've had to go, and they were the one of the first to market, and we've had to go and address them with incredibly tight volume pricing and a lot of technology in order to win them back. But starting July 1st, we have them back 100%. So we'll continue to add that growth. So it's also, that's a lesson learned that, you know, finding the right person to talk to in your customers, mm -hmm. especially when they're big businesses, sometimes difficult, and you gotta build those relationships mm -hmm. and keep them on your side. Mm -hmm. And um, business development is incredibly important. Relationship management. Sales mm -hmm. is important, but customer relations is incredibly important too. And then life evolves as you put a plan in place. So mm -hmm. there I am. This is what I'd like. <laughs> you know, God and universe, this is really my dream for my life. And um, so, you know, from paper boy to dairy farm hand, software engineer to, you know, going to Australia as a technical director of a joint venture to going to Germany as a CEO of a, of a joint venture company and then um, managing director of a Czech company and the senior vice president. I never could have even imagined that, how that was going to go, but I know that when I started at GE, I liked Jack Welch. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, maybe someday I'd like to be Jack. I don't have that desire anymore <laughs> because that's an incredibly unbalanced life in yeah. my opinion. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if you know what these guys go through, but I've seen many of them. We think their lives are, you know, that much more amazing, but the reality is that they don't have the freedom that, mm -hmm. they don't even have the freedom that I do. I have amazing freedom in my job. You can see that. Mm -hmm. So, and what's next, uh, President? How did the story <laughs> yes. turn out? I'll show you some pictures. So that's my mom and dad uh -huh. and I in Neuschwanstein. Uh -huh. So I've been to Russia, Tajikistan, Namibia, Egypt, and Europe. Aww. These are my kids. So this is um, Jason there was I think 12, 13, and Crystal was mm, 8, 9. And this is... Um, at her wedding. Aww. So that's great. Yeah. yeah. That's great. That's a couple years ago. 
he's the good looking one. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, be my own boss, you know, having the opportunity to, um, I own a gentleman ranch. I've got 35 acres in, in Castle Rock, Colorado. Nice. Uh, that was this, this weekend. It's <laughs> amazing. There's my grapes. So I've actually got my farm. Yeah. <laughs> and for anybody who's uh, Do you make it in Colorado, I, I'm, this year's my year. Nice. This year's my year. We, we're doing the lobster bake in the in the vineyard every year, like we did the lobster bake on the lake in um, in uh, <laughs> But the loft above the barn is actually an apartment that we VRBO. And so um, if you ever get to Castle Rock. Mm -hmm looking for a place to stay. And that's out my back window. So I feel incredibly blessed to be on the journey, right? And then space is cool. So I went to work for GE Space right out of school. I went to work for Lockheed Martin Space. I had my private pilot's license. I have 110 hours of private pilot in command. And then I actually worked in aviation safety. The, the, business in the Czech Republic with the 37 countries, we were installing radar systems on airport surface and, in the, and for air coverage. And so the amount of planes I've been on, two million miles on United, plus probably a million miles on Adap, Qantas, and yeah. British Air, and, and all the others, um, but, and then delivering radar systems to keep people safe while they're flying. That was probably one of my favorite jobs. And then I think the professor's more to come. So that's why I'm, I'm here, I'm trying to teach some more yeah. of what I've learned about, you know, growing these businesses. You're on it. And then um, it does turn out the way it should, so be ready to roll with it. And then um, I've got a list of things that I did to put data dynamics on the AIM 5000. Oh, and um, so, you know, I'm happy to share the, uh, the slides. The, I'll probably cut out the proprietary ones for data dynamics, but um, you know I'd be really willing to sit down and talk to you guys about what what I think works. Um, I don't claim to be, you know, always right, but I think you know the experience in so many diverse places actually is um, is valuable mm -hmm. to to talk to. So. Uh, let's see. So these are the things I did. Strategic planning, the market analysis, establishing the market pipeline, customer research, figure out how to run tax, automate the systems, mm -hmm. execute to the numbers. And so, you know, in closing, it's visualize a trajectory. What is it? You gotta figure out what you wanna be before you can do, and then have, um, Branding and location is incredibly important. How you set that up. Be first to market or differentiate yourself. Mm -hmm. um, add value to your customers or you're going to die. So, you know, I think that's kind of what I hear from JD in terms of your current company. It's we start to add value, but continually add value is a, is a, is a tough but Don't ever let a customer down, and that's why we have a guarantee and that's why we you know actually do make goods and we do refunds we you know once it's happened twice you're on our you know do not service list but that's just the way it is mm -hmm. and then hire the best and take care of them figure out how to do that um, I will say you know in terms of personal growth I think that's the thing that's helped me the most in the last five years and it it was a mission that I think I met Russ Whitney on, you know, partway through it. Something I knew was going on with me, right? I'm a honey badger. <laughs> and and that honey badger sometimes isn't always nice to people. Yeah. And, and you know, you really have to take an inner look and, and figure out, okay, what's important in your life? And having that practice of waking up with gratitude and listening to really what's your conscience, what that what's that what's your conscience telling you is the most important thing for the day has been incredibly valuable for me and um, 
Um, and it's given me opportunity to learn even more about myself, which makes me a much better leader. I've had people come up to me and say, hmm, what's up with you? <laughs> <laughs> I say, oh, what do you mean? <laughs> you seem so much more grounded and connected. I'm like, really? Oh, that's interesting that you observe that. <laughs> a perceptive of you. I'm going to India for 10 days yeah. from November to December. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm looking forward to spending some time in the Himalayas. Mm -hmm. And um, um, I'm a Christian Buddhist. So, mm -hmm. you know, I have an interesting kind of a background. I don't claim much to be a Buddhist, but I actually believe that, you know, there's so many different teachings in the world that they give value and just mm -hmm. understanding people and, and where they're coming from is incredibly important. I was a guy who had the Catholic girlfriend we go to you know mass at seven o'clock and then go to the Methodist church at ten so we get a lot of Sunday stuff. Um, but personal growth is really more about figuring out what is it that motivates you, what is your purpose in life, and if without that purpose you don't have a reason to get up. And um, I think the world is becoming more and more connected. My mm -hmm. generation was the was a tough one to deal with. And I think um, what I'm seeing, what I love so much about next generation in the millennials is they actually get it. Mm -hmm. and they're talking about their nonprofits and they're talking about, you know, all of the things that they're doing to change the world. And that's incredibly amazing to me. I still think that um, there's more room to go. Um, I will tell you that um, this man is incredibly amazing to me. He's my 93-year-old coach. 93-year-old coach. I was actually on a call with him today. Um, the power of positive thinking was correct, but it was not complete. And that's where the beat you have comes from. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, his program is called Being the Solution. And um, um, there's many of us who actually um, realize that um, what we need for ourselves and for our businesses more is to actually enact a little bit more of gentleness and kindness and actually have the faith in ourselves and from there, you know, we can grow. So. Uh -oh. Is that it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Kevin. That was awesome. You know, it's really exciting to see how somebody, you know, has been able